Do you know the story when silver went from $18 an ounce to $30 an ounce in five months? Well, we're going to revisit that story from 2010 to show you how fast silver can get moving. Welcome to Silver Heist. Thank you to our returning subscribers and guests. So I've got a great story from the Financial Times from 2010 that's going to show you how fast silver can get moving once it decides to move. And the interesting part of the story is that the arguments that explain the market of silver still hold true for today. So silver's moved a little bit recently and as has gold. Here's a great story that we can learn from in 2010 when silver went from $18 in August to $30 by December and $50 before the next summer. So this is Financial Times, October 20th, 2010. Speculators polish up the price of silver. Suggestion, returns could be greater than gold. So the key thing to listen for in this article is how the arguments of 2010 are eerily similar to the arguments of 2020. Almost anything is better than paper money. Any fool can run a printing press. These are not the words of a modern day gold bug, but attributed to Nelson Bunker Hunt, the billionaire oil baron who went long on silver in the 70s. So long, in fact, that he and his brother cornered the market, were sanctioned by the regulator for market manipulation, and went bankrupt in the process. After their move, the price of silver hit a peak of $50 an ounce in 1980 before dropping to $10 the following year. In the past month, silver has bounced back to prices not seen since the Hunt Brothers' day, no single investor is cornering the market, but just as in the 70s, the price is being driven by surging speculative demand as investors sweep up supplies of the gray precious metal whose primary use is industrial. Investors in silver, also known as poor man's gold, are persuaded by many of the same arguments that have driven the gold price higher. The prospect of a global currency war in which central banks race to devalue their currencies to support domestic growth, and the belief that a second round of emergency monetary easing by the Federal Reserve could eventually lead to a sharp jump in inflation. Gold has captured the headlines, ticking off one new record high after another, but volatility in bullion is near a five-year low which for some investors makes it a less exciting prospect. Returns on silver, they say, could be greater. Indeed, there are symptoms of spreading silver fever. Sales of silver coins are set to hit a record high this year, while investors have snapped up more than 1,500 tons of silver through exchange-traded funds, ETFs, in the past two months alone. That is more than 5% of total annual silver supplies. Michael Kramer, president at Manfra, Todella, and Brooks, a large U.S. coin dealership, says, Silver coins are doing very well. David Madge, director of bullion sales at the Royal Canadian Mint, says it has already sold an excess of 30% more of its popular silver maple leaf coin than last year's record 10 million ounces. The U.S. Mint has sold 27.5 million ounces of silver American Eagle so far this year, already within reach of last year's record 28.8 million ounces with the busy Christmas period still to come. The interest in ETFs, coins, and futures has helped to drive prices higher. Silver is one of the best performing commodities this year. In the past two months, it has rallied 31% to 23.72 an ounce on Wednesday, more than three times gold's 8.9% rise. The price rises, in turn, have prompted a response from the main silver mints. The U.S. Mint 
this month raised the premium above the value of the metal content that it charges dealers buying American Silver Eagles. The Canadian Mint has run out of 2010 dated Silver Maple Leaf coins, although Mr. Madge says it would produce more if needed. Analysts and investors, though, are divided on the outlook for the metal. Some see silver as having brighter prospects than bullion. The reason for this is that, unlike gold, for which investment is now the biggest single source of demand, silver consumption is still largely accounted for by its traditional end uses in the production of jewelry and in the electric industry and photography. In theory, this should mean that as the world economy recovers, silver will benefit from an extra shot in the arm and outperform gold, says Daniel Brebner, commodities analyst at Deutsche Bank in London. Matthew Turner, analyst at Mitsubishi, the Japanese trading house, says, There are two drivers for silver, industrial demand and gold. The two drivers are both positive at the moment. Traders and refiners have reported a strong rebound in industrial demand for silver. Solar power, which uses silver-containing chemicals to convert sunlight into electricity, is a source of new demand. Traditional consumers in the electronics industry are also bouncing back strongly, refiners say. Scott Morrison, chief executive of Metalor, one of the world's top precious metals refiners, says... Industrial demand for silver is very strong. Back to 2008 levels are even better. Nonetheless, silver prices are likely to remain driven by the investment community in the short term. Hedge funds that are bullish about gold have begun taking positions in the silver market, aiming to profit from its higher volatility, bankers say. That could lead to sizable price swings in the short term, as a silver market is a good deal smaller than that for gold. A large investment can have a bigger impact on prices. Some senior traders are looking for silver to hit $30 an ounce in the next year, a 25% increase on current prices. And it actually hit $30 an ounce by the end of the calendar year in December 2010. But analysts, bankers, and industry executives alike are weary of the higher volatility that hedge funds and other investors are bringing to the silver market, especially as mine production of silver, unlike some other metals, is relatively plentiful. Investment demand is critical in a market where growing fabrication demand is not sufficient to propel prices, says Suki Cooper, precious metals analyst at Barclays Capital. If investors stop accumulating fresh metal to position against market uncertainties, prices could correct sharply before finding fundamental support. No one is trying to corner the market, at least not yet, but the risk averse should probably tread warily. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So where is silver going to go for the rest of 2020 and then 2021? With increased coin demand, can the U.S. Mint keep up with production? If you'd like to learn more, please click on our featured video.